How can our leaders get away with so many lies? Why do we ever believe them? The president, by the way, reached a major milestone yesterday, and I don't feel like this has gotten enough attention. According to the Washington Post, which has been keeping track, I guess, yesterday, Trump told his 2,000th lie since taking office. <laughs> so happy lie 2K, everybody. 2,000 lies. How can two people receive the same information and come to different conclusions? How can everybody be a hero in their own story? So we were talking about treating women with respect. It's an American ideal that we treat women with respect. You gotta give me the back of that shirt one more time, that's too much fun. Trump that bitch! <laughs> we don't even see the irony in it. I love it, right? Direct environmental perspective plays its role. A slightly different angle gives a different sensory input. But personal historical perspective and confirmation bias play a bigger role than it's comfortable to admit. With our own personal view or zeitgeist, a biological necessity that helps us cope with a memory that is far from perfect in a world of infinite possibilities. The 52 card deck has been used for centuries. Every day, thousands just like it are shuffled in casinos all over the world, the order rearranged each time. And yet, every time you pick up a well-shuffled deck like this one, you are almost certainly holding an arrangement of cards that has never before existed in all of history. Our brains receive so much input that to understand, process, and respond, we choose what to focus on and retain at any given moment, with little of that initial retention kept for long-term use. This has been exposed because what is retained and considered to be a true memory of a situation has been shown to not always match the facts or what would be electronically recorded, given a personal truth that doesn't match recorded facts. That we have stockpiles of PPE equipment and... The protection of health and care workers has now become a pressing issue in this pandemic. With the growing number of deaths of frontline staff and delays in providing PPE and testing, the spotlight is on what could have been done or what should have been done to avoid this. I'm sorry if people feel that there have been failings. I'll be very, very clear about that. Some of the faces of the NHS staff who've tragically already died from the coronavirus. As you saw, on the 18th of March, Boris thought he had a stockpile of PPE. And even though many frontline staff and media reports show clear shortfalls over the next month, the nearest to an apology given was, sorry if you feel. So even though it's a fact that there hasn't been enough PPE, the government truths of a stockpile and sorry if you feel deflects blame and allows a narrative of frontline staff having PPE and only feeling it is not enough, blurring the fact of PPE shortages using personal truths or perspective. This perspective-driven memory is closely linked to our learning and beliefs, with what is believed to be true having implications on how a person thinks, with confirmation bias helping to entrench misconceptions such as lucky or unlucky numbers. Whereas 13 is unlucky for most, my first child was born on the 13th and my successful PhD interview was on the 13th. And although only the interview was on a Friday, I always have a spring in my step on the Friday for 13th, helping to confirm to me that 13 is a good number and it puts me in a good mood, contradicting the common fear. These beliefs can become deep rooted, especially if they allow someone to feel special because they know the truth, even if that truth contradicts established facts such as the shape of the earth. Johnson was an early supporter of Britain leaving the EU and has doubled down lately on Brexit, promising to take Britain out of the European Union by the October 31st deadline, do or die. Religious leaders, politicians and military commanders have used perception and belief to help control the populace. Philosophers and psychologists have pondered and researched these facts and come up with theories, many of which are later debunked or simply forgotten. However, these methods have proved effective and as they were reached after much research and consideration, could any of them hold up to the modern understanding of biology? Can historical methods provide new insight into how people remember and what preconceptions influence their perception of truth? In the post-truth personal advertisement fake news era, it would seem more important than ever to understand why there is a difference between truth and fact, 
and how our own perceptions can be and have been used to influence us. To see how governments are currently using these methods, see the excellent documentary Hypernormalization by Adam Curtis. Current advances in biology allow for real-time processes within the brain to be studied, revealing its pathways and reactions to stimuli. Is there a link between historical theories and biological facts? In researching this subject, I found a surprising number of links between the biology of memories and theories relating to how memories work. These theories were formed long before modern advances. This video series will hopefully shed some light on how we are and have been influenced by our environment, allowing us to better determine our own biases and misconceptions and allowing us to cut through all the information and trust in what we choose to believe. We are just getting started, believe me. 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 Believe me.